Hey, 4xE fans. Uh, I'm going to talk about efficiency in this video, the efficiency of the Wrangler 4xE. And there's a really interesting experiment that I'm going to do today that was actually inspired by Aptera. If you aren't familiar with Aptera, it is a three-wheel, I guess you'd call it an auto cycle. I don't want to call it a car because it's only got three wheels. But it's a, a three-wheeled, highly, highly, highly efficient vehicle that is uh, getting real close to coming to market in the United States. They've been working on this thing for years. It, is, it has had so many developmental setbacks and it's they've just been trying and trying and trying and I, I think it's actually getting close to happening. It's exciting to watch. But uh, the Aptera actually has some lessons to teach us so that we can understand the efficiency of the Wrangler 4 by e and why it's so poor. Now, what Aptera recently did, one of their, their field tests, they took an Aptera out, got it up to 60 miles an hour, threw it in neutral, and they wanted to see how far it would coast. And I thought it would be real fun to do a back-to-back -back comparison to a Jeep Wrangler 4xE to kind of compare the opposite end of that efficiency spectrum to see how far it goes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that today. And uh, wh why I'm doing this, one of the conversations that happen one of the things that people have asked a lot is why doesn't Jeep put solar panels on the Wrangler 4xE and the general idea is that the juice isn't worth the squeeze that's what a, a lot of people in the electric world would say because you could have several thousand dollars in solar panels on a vehicle and in the case of the Jeep Wrangler, it wouldn't really provide that much. You wouldn't really get that much benefit from it. Now, the Aptera has decided to line the vehicle with solar panels, and uh, they are touting that in some parts of the country, you might not ever have to plug it in, and that's because it works so efficiently with the energy it has. It's not like the Wrangler 4xE where it you know, doesn't make efficient use of the energy because of the shape of the vehicle and the rolling resistance. So that's what we want to compare today. I've got a long stretch of country road that as long as I don't have any cars around me, I'm going to do this. If, I, if there's anybody around me, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to hold them up. But what I'm going to do is get the vehicle up to 60 miles an hour, throw it in neutral, and we're going to time how long it takes to come to a complete stop. Now, I have uh, some very easterly winds in the area where I'm going to do this. So I'm going to do it in both directions and then average that time. And that should counteract, counteract any, you know, offset we get from any help from the wind. So uh, we're going to go up here a little ways and we're going to start uh, and come in a south direction first. And we'll get it up to 60 miles an hour, throw it in neutral, start a timer. We'll see how long it takes to come to a complete stop and then I'll turn around and do it in the other direction. The road is mostly flat, so I don't think any hills are going to skew my uh, results in, in either direction. And uh, let's see how this plays out. All right, I'm gonna get the vehicle going up to 60 mile an hour. I should mention this is a Sahara, a 21 Sahara. It does have two inch lift kit. I have 35 inch KO2s and um, I do have a metal cloak skid plate on the bottom, which adds some weight. So we do have some things working against it from stock. But we're gonna see how this goes. And I'm gonna say, uh, put this into neutral. There's 60 mile an hour, neutral now. Max region is not on. Fifty miles an hour. Forty five. Forty. Thirty. Uh, just looking at some flags that are nearby. I think our wind is a south. Uh, it's mostly easter eastern wind with a little bit of south. So I might be getting a little bit of a tailwind going in this direction. So that's why I wanted to do this in two different directions. There's 20 miles an hour. 
you know, the one thing that the Aptera does not have is the, um, the inertia from the larger tires. It has a smaller tire. I don't know if that makes any difference at all to counteract the rolling resistance of those tires. I still don't see anybody behind me. 10 miles an hour. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, there's a complete stop. All right, so we will uh, add a timer to that when I go back and edit the video so we can see how long that is. And um, we're gonna go down the road here a little ways and do that same experiment in the other direction. And then we'll average those two times together. All right, here we go with our test in the other direction. Wouldn't believe how hard it has been to find a gap where there aren't cars coming to do this. So I'm gonna try to do this really quick. Get it up to 60. There's 60 miles an hour, neutral. I'm looking at some of the flags off the side of the road and I can see that there's a, you know, the wind's going about the same direction that it was when I did my northern test, or when I did my southern test. This is my northern test. And uh, we're down to 35. Thirty. If you notice, I do have my hazards on, just in case a car does come along. I'm going to try to gauge if I can scooch over to the side of the road and let them pass, or if we'll hit our stop point before they get to me. There's one off in the distance I can see behind me, so I'm just trying to be kind to people. There's 20 miles an hour. And this actually ended up being the same stretch of road, so I. It's it's a pretty flat country road, so I uh, I think I've removed as many variables as I can without being on a uh, closed controlled track. There's 12, 11, 10. I'm just watching that car behind me. Eight. Maybe he'll get the hint and just go around. Oh, he's turning off. Yes. <laughs> Seven, six. I mean, I'm doing it for science, but I'm also a courteous person. Five, four, three, two, maybe. There's one. and maybe zero. Zero on the dash, full stop. So there's the there's the test in both directions. That's all the testing I'm gonna get done today. I just, uh, it was too difficult. I, I probably spent an hour just trying to find a clean stretch of road to do this on. And um, I'll, there'll be some more at the end of this video because I'm gonna summarize all my findings and everything. But uh, in advance, thanks for watching.